In this video, I'll demonstrate how to compare samples from two independent populations where the standard deviation of each population is unknown and is assumed to be unequal. In this data set, we have collected the results of two samples from a lab which tested the absorbency in milliliters of two brands of paper towels. We begin with the assumption that although we do not know the standard deviation of the absorbency for the two populations, they are not the same. And because we have two independent populations, we can apply a t-test in Excel for two samples assuming unequal variances. Go to Data, Data Analysis, and scroll to Two Sample Assuming Unequal Variances, select OK. Variable 1 range is going to be the first sample, and variable 2 range is the second sample. Note that our hypothesis is that the mean absorbency of each population is equal. Our hypothesized mean difference will be zero. We're asking Excel to tell us if the populations are significantly different from one another or are the same. I'll include labels since I included my column header in the variable ranges. I'm conducting this test at a 10% significance level, so my alpha will be 0.1. And then let's go ahead and put the output in this tab in cell D1. We have our T test statistic and our T critical two tail value that we can compare. Note that for the T critical, this is plus or minus 1.796. And we will reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic is less than minus 1.796 or greater than 1.796. Minus 2.473 is less than minus 1.796. We would reject the null hypothesis and state that the brands do not have the same absorbency. We can also look at our p-value for a two-tailed test. If the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. So whether we use the t-test statistic versus t-critical value or the p-value, we'll get the same results from our test. Sometimes we do not have access to the sample data, but we do have the sample mean and standard deviation. In that case, we can do a bit of manual work and use Excel's t.inv and t.dist functions to get our p-value and test statistic and critical value. I've set up a table here, and I've already entered the mean, variance, sample size, and alpha in the table. Note that for variance, I've used the var.s formula. Let's break the formulas down into pieces and work through each part. The t is our test statistic. We will calculate the test statistic. Degrees of freedom looks like a far more complex formula than it is. We're going to go ahead and compute variance over n since we use it several times in these formulas. Our variance divided by n, and then I can drag that formula over to the right. We also are going to be using n minus 1, so let's go ahead and calculate that. Now we can calculate our degrees of freedom. Let's walk through the formula. In the numerator, we have variance over n plus variance over n squared. In the denominator, we have variance over n squared divided by n minus 1 plus variance over n squared divided by n minus 1. When we hit enter, we get a number of 10.863. Degrees of freedom has to be a whole number. The convention is that we will round down to the nearest whole number. I'll use the round down function. The round down function allows us to tell Excel whatever number you get, round it down to the next integer, which will put us at 10 degrees of freedom. Notice the Excel output is 11 degrees of freedom. Our results will therefore be slightly different. For the numerator of our test statistic, that's equal to the mean of sample 1 minus the mean of sample 2, we get a negative 2.97. The t denominator is the square root of s over n plus s over n, close parenthesis. Now we have our t numerator and denominator. We can calculate our test statistic, which is minus 2.473. As you can see, it's exactly the same as the Excel output. Now we're ready to calculate our p-value. 
we'll use the t.dist formula, and because this is a two-tailed test, I'll go ahead and pick that one. Our x is the test statistic we just calculated, but Excel will not allow us to use a negative value here, so we'll put a minus in front of it to get rid of that negative, comma, and degrees of freedom. Our p-value is 0.033 versus 0.031, t critical value equals t dot inv dot 2t. This is our alpha and our degrees of freedom. And again, it should be slightly different than the one Excel calculated with its t-test because we're using one fewer degrees of freedom. And the result is 1.812. This video has demonstrated how to conduct a two-sample hypothesis test for two independent populations when population standard deviation is unknown and assumed to be unequal. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to apply Excel's Data Analysis Z-Test to sample for means in comparing samples from two independent populations with known population standard deviations. The owner of a hardware store would like to determine whether there is a difference in sales between male and female sales associates. In this data set, we have a sample of 40 days of sales by the male associates, which has a mean of $1,400, and a sample of 50 days of sales by the female associates with a mean of $1,500. The standard deviation of each population is known to be $200 for males and $250 for females. Mean sales are different between these two randomly drawn samples. The question is, does enough of a difference exist to be considered significant so that we can draw a conclusion that the mean amount sold per day is larger for the women? Based on the claim that the manager seeks to prove, our alternative hypothesis is mu sub 1 is greater than mu sub 2 where mu sub 1 is the mean of female associates' sales, and mu sub 2 is the mean of male associates' sales. The null hypothesis is, therefore, mu 1 is less than or equal to mu 2. To use the z-test in Excel's data analysis menu, we need to calculate the variance for the populations. The male associates' variance is 200 squared, and the female associate's variance is 250 squared. Now we're ready to conduct the test. We go to Data, Data Analysis, and scroll to the bottom to find Z-Test to sample for means. For variable 1, we put the left side of the hypothesis. In this case, mu1 stands for female sales associates, therefore our sample data for female sales associates goes into variable 1. Variable 2's range is the male sales associates. Hypothesized mean difference is 0. Variable 1's variance, and we're going to put the female sales associates population variance, and variable 2 will be male associates population variance of 40,000. I'll include labels since I included the column header in my variable range data. For my alpha, we'll leave the alpha at 0.05, and I'll make the output range here in the cell G1. Click OK, and here's the output. We have run a z-test to sample for the means. We're running a one-tailed hypothesis test. We can go straight to the p-value and see if we accept or reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is smaller than alpha, we reject. And here, the p-value is 0.017, smaller than the alpha of 0.05. You can also look at the z-critical value versus the z-test statistic. Since we're using a right-tailed test, if the z-test statistic is greater than the z-critical value, we will reject the null hypothesis. The test statistic is larger. As with the p-value, the result is to reject the null. We can conclude that mean sales by women are larger than mean sales by men. In this case, we had all of the sample data. Sometimes you may only have the sample means given to you. You can still run this test in Excel. 
by creating columns of your average number and dragging it down the column. For males, the mean was 1400, and for females, 1500. I simply need to create columns that go down as far as necessary, and then I can run the exact same test. We'll change our range here from B1 to the female sales column here, and we'll change the range from A1 to the column of 1400s. We leave the hypothesized mean and variance is the same, leave the labels in. Our alpha is at 0.05, and we'll change the output to be just below this table so that we can compare the two. And as you can see, the result is exactly the same. We have a Z test statistic of 2.11, our one-tailed p-value is 0.018, our z-critical one-tail is 1 1.64. In the situation that you only have a sample mean and the population standard deviation, you can still use the z-test to sample for means in Excel as long as you create columns that have the mean repeated as many times as you have items in your sample. This video has demonstrated how to use Excel's data analysis tool, the Z-Test to sample for means, to compare samples from two independent populations for which the population standard deviations are known. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to apply Excel's data analysis t-test to sample assuming equal variances. The owner of a hardware store would like to determine whether there is a difference in sales between male and female sales associates. In this data set, we have a sample of 40 days of sales by the male associates and 50 days of sales by the female associates. The standard deviation of each population is unknown but is assumed to be equal. The null hypothesis is mu1 equals mu2, where mu1 is the mean of the population for male associate sales, and mu2 is the population mean for female associate sales. The alternative hypothesis is mu1 not equal to mu2. I'm going to move this out of the way because I want my output from the result of the test to be at the top here. We go to data, data analysis, and we select t-test to sample assuming equal variances. Our variable 1 range will be the variable to the left of the equal sign, in this case male sale associates, and the variable 2 range will be female associates sales. The hypothesized mean difference is 0. I'll select labels because we've included the column header and leave the alpha at 0.05. For my output range, I'll put the output in this tab in cell D1, and we run the test. Now we can go straight to the p-value. Remember this is a two-tailed test, and that is 0 0.0002, or far less than the 5% of our alpha. We can also use the t-test statistic and compare it with the t-critical two-tail, our t-test statistic is minus 3.95. Remember that because this is two-tail, it could either be minus 1.99 or positive 1.99. If our t-test statistic is to the left of or less than the negative t-critical two-tail, we will reject the null hypothesis. Minus 3.95 is less than minus 1.99. As with the p-value result, we will reject the null hypothesis and conclude that mean sales for male associates are not equal to mean sales for female associates. Sometimes we don't have access to the sample data, only to the sample means and sample standard deviations. We can still solve in Excel. I've set up a table with some numbers already filled in and the formulas that we'll base our calculations on. Note that I have used the var.s formula for variance. We'll use the samples variances in our formulas. A t-test for two samples assuming equal variance is also called a two-sample pooled test. 
The degrees of freedom for pooled variance are the total number of items across the samples minus 2, and we have degrees of freedom equal 88. We are going to calculate the t-test statistic. To get the numerator is simple. It's equal to sample 1's mean minus sample 2's mean. So we have minus 100 for our sample difference. 1 over n will be used in the denominator. Let's go ahead and calculate that. 1 divided by n, and I can drag that over. The next item we need to calculate is pooled variance, which is this s sub p squared. So let's go ahead and calculate that. Equals n minus 1 times variance plus n minus 1 times variance for sample 2. The whole thing is going to be divided by degrees of freedom. And so our pooled variance is 14. 243, as you can see, it matches the pooled variance that Excel calculated for us. Now we're ready to calculate the denominator of our test statistic, which is equal to the square root of pooled variance times 1 over n plus 1 over n, which is showing in the formula bar at top. Now I'm ready to hit enter, and the denominator has been calculated. Now it's a matter of taking the numerator divided by the denominator to get our test statistic, and our test statistic is minus 3.95, the same thing that we calculated using Excel's t-test. Now we're ready to calculate the p-value, which we'll use Excel's t.dist formula, but we're going to use t.dist 2t because this is a two-tailed test. x is the test statistic that we just calculated. We cannot put a negative value in for the test statistic. Here's what happens if you try. You get a num error. Put a minus sign in front of the critical value, and we get a p-value that matches the one from Excel's output. Now we're ready to calculate our t-critical value, which we'll use t.inv, two-tailed. The probability is our alpha, and the degrees of freedom, of course, is 88 close that parenthesis, and we get a t-critical value of 1.99. This video has demonstrated how to conduct a two-sample pooled test in order to compare samples from independent populations with an unknown but assumed equal population standard deviations. This video will demonstrate how to conduct a paired t-test when evaluating the difference between two dependent samples. In this data set, a fitness center claims that completing their program will lead to weight loss. The data show eight participants' weight before and after the program. Because we are testing whether the program leads to weight loss, our alternative hypothesis is that the difference between population 1 and population 2 will be positive. In other words, the mean difference is greater than 0. Let's run the test. We go to Data, Data Analysis, Paired to Sample for Means, and click OK. Variable 1 range is the before column. Variable 2 range is the after column. Our hypothesized mean difference will put a zero here. Let's run the test at a 0.01 or a 1% level of significance, and we'll have our output range here in E1. The first thing we look at is our p-value for the one-tailed test. We have a 0.012, which is greater than the significance level of 0.01. When p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Let's look at our test statistic, 2.86. If it is less than the t-critical one-tail value, then it will be in the acceptance region, and we fail to reject. We cannot claim that the mean difference between samples is greater than zero. This video demonstrated how to use Excel's data analysis tool, the t-test paired two sample for means, to conduct a paired t-test on two dependent samples.